program, Forgivable Loan, um, I would highly recommend um, going back and watching that episode. Um, I will touch on it a little bit tonight, but we are going to mainly focus on if you're eligible for the second round of the PPP loan and the forgiveness process. Um, and then we'll open it up for questions at the end. And you can ask us questions about any portion of it and we'll be happy to answer them. Um, so just the basic criteria for this program um, for PPP1 is that you do need to be a small business owner. Um, it doesn't require you to have been a notary in order for us to help you. You just need it to have either done 1099 gig work, that can be Uber, Lyft, um, any of those things. Or if you're just self-employed, you can be a barber, a stylist, all the whole rim of things for small businesses. You can be eligible for this program if you meet the following criteria. You need to have made at least a minimum of $5,000 or more in order to go through our lender in the year 2020 or 2019. It needs to have been filed on your tax return. And what we are looking for when we look at your tax return is that you had a Schedule C. And what that form is, it shows the profit and loss for your business. If you have that as a part of your tax return, then and you've made that minimum of $5,000 or more, that's requirement number one. Requirement number two is that you were in business pre-pandemic. The way that is determined is if you were operating prior to February 15th of 2020. Those two requirements are the same whether you're applying for the first PPP loan or your second PPP loan. You still have to meet those two basic requirements, okay? Um, in order where the difference comes in at, if you're applying for PPP2, is you had to have had a 25% reduction in revenue or gross sales for your business in at least one quarter of 2020 compared to the same quarter in 2019. So what does that mean? And how would you know if you had that reduction in income? The easiest example I can provide is if, for example, in 2019, in quarter two, you made $10,000 in revenue during the months of April, May, and June, those are quarter two months, and you combined your income for all three of those months and it was $10,000, mm -hmm. if in 2020, which is, so sorry, um, <laughs> if in 2020, whenever the um, pandemic started, a lot of us we're either out of work because our kids um, were sent home, they were virtual learning, or you might not have been considered an essential worker. So your income may have went down for those same months, April, May, and June. If it went down to from 10,000 the previous year to $7,500 for 2020 during those months, that is a 25% reduction in gross income or revenue for your business during that quarter. If that is you, then you automatically would qualify for round two of the PPP loan. So you can apply again. Um, so if your first PPP loan was for $5,000, your second one will also be for $5,000. And the application is the exact same. You wouldn't have to put in anything different outside of what quarter you had the loss in. That's the only difference on these applications. You still would have to meet the same requirements for forgiveness, which is paying yourself at least 60% of the funds that you receive. So if you're a sole proprietor or if you're a single member LLC, any of those things, if you're the only person in your business, you would need to just pay yourself 60% of the funds that you receive, okay? So if you got a loan for $10,000, then you need to pay yourself at least $6,000 of that in order for this loan to be forgivable. Now, if you wanted to pay yourself the whole $10,000, you can do that as well, and it will still all be forgiven, all right? But if you don't need all of the $10,000 to pay yourself, the remaining 40%, which would be $4,000 in this example, you can use to pay for your utilities, your rent, mortgage interest, 
operational expenses for your business, that's probably the biggest one that um, would benefit you the most for your business is the operational. Um, Cause that can be used for things like um, just for notaries, you know, just printers, paper, ink, that's gonna be gas. Almost everything we do in our business is an operational expense. Um, so it's really easy to use these funds and have them forgiven because you're just using it on things that you already do on a daily basis. Um, so it's not nothing extraordinary that you have to go above and beyond to do. Um, so I definitely recommend that you take a look at your bank statements and compare them from year to year. Or if you have profit and loss sheets, maybe you use something like notary assist or ADP and you already have a record of what you made in each quarter, then it's gonna be fairly easy for you to see if there was a reduction for you to be able to qualify for this, okay? Um, so I highly recommend applying for it. Now, the other thing that I would also mention with it is that you can, whenever you apply, at least know the numbers of the quarters where you had the reduction. And when I say that, you're gonna wanna know, okay, it was 10,000 in 2019, quarter two, Quarter two, 2020, it was 7,500. At a minimum, you already wanna know that whenever you fill out the application because during our application process, it's going to ask you that. Now, the proof that you need to provide in order to have it forgiven, um, you can actually have that when it's time for you to apply for forgiveness in anywhere from four to 10 months, just depending on when the lender opens up the forgiveness application, that does vary that's whenever you're actually going to need to have a hard copy proof either with a profit and loss sheet for your business or your bank statements to compare between the years you're going to want to have that at the forgiveness time or before so that you can prove that there was that 25 percent or more reduction in income to have the loan forgiven okay um another thing that i do want to mention tonight as well is that they do cap it at $100,000 of maximum income. So if you're someone who made um, $150,000, the maximum loan amount you're going to be able to receive is $20,833. And the way they are coming up with that is they're making it as if you only made $100,000, okay? The only way to not have that cap in place is if you do have W-2 employees as a part of your company, then you will be eligible to qualify for more funds so that you can support the payroll for your employees as well. All right. Um, now, in, in regards to documentation for the second round, it is the exact same as it was for the first PPP loan. You will still need to provide your bank statements. That's going to be for February of 2020, March of 2021. Or if your bank has already printed April statement, then you can provide April of 2021. Everybody's bank is different on when they generate statements but you're gonna to wanna to present your most recent bank statement. We will need your taxes either for 2019 or 2020, your driver's license and avoided check for the account that you want your funds deposited into or a direct deposit form from your bank. If you have all of those documents ready, then you are in position to go ahead and apply for the loan, okay? Um, now, I will also want to say, if you've already applied with maybe another lender and you're still in the waiting process, if you haven't signed documents yet, um, you can definitely apply at notarypp.com where we can walk you through this process. If you're kind of stuck or if you have questions about it, um, we are offering that. Just because what we've found is um, that with larger lenders, it is taking about four to eight weeks to get through the process just because they have such large volume of applicants coming through. With us, um, by our partnership with A10 Capital, we have been able to shorten that to around seven to 10 days, and in some cases less, um, just depending on how quick we get your documents in to get you through the process. As of right now, 
funds are getting limited. So we are telling you with the sense of urgency, if you don't have your application in, get it in because we have maybe about two weeks of funding left. So if you're someone who has, has not applied for PPP1 yet and you're eligible for PPP2 as well, you certainly want to get your application in as soon as possible because as soon as the funds from PPP1 hits your account, you're eligible to immediately apply for the second PPP loan without having to wait. So as of right now, you can still potentially get both as time goes on you may end up only getting one, even if you are eligible for the second one, just because time and funds are running out. Okay. All right. Um, but that is pretty much everything in regards to the second one. Um, I do just want to reiterate what you can spend it on to have it forgiven, and then I will turn it over to Renee. Um, she likes to do a walkthrough of the documents just so you can have a great visual, okay? Um, but the things you can use it for, again, are payroll, which mainly for small business owners or self-employed, sole proprietors, that is strictly just means paying yourself. And you can do that, again, by writing yourself a check from your account, and it's saying owner's draw. You can do a transfer and put in a memo on the transfer that it's an owner's draw as well. Also use it for your mortgage interest, your rent, your utilities, again, operational costs for your business. So you really have an unlimited amount of things that you can use this for and have this loan forgiven. I cannot stress that enough. Um, it does not have any impact on your credit. So your credit is not pulled in any way. It doesn't report to your credit. It is strictly a business loan. So if you're someone that's trying to maybe apply for a home or anything like that, this will not have any impact on that. So don't let anything of that nature hold you back from having access to this. This is essentially like a stimulus check for your business to keep it running and keep it going until this process with the pandemic is over. And Renee, I'll go ahead and turn it over to you. Not a problem. Well, thank you so much, Leslie, for um, explaining that. Um, and I will take the lead. So um, when it comes to, let's sh share my screen one second. Okay, so when it comes to how to apply, this section of um, the war room is really focused on how do you know if you're eligible and how to apply? Okay, so with that being said, and um, going through the second round, so this is the website you go to. It's notaryppp.com. Um, based off of how do you know you're eligible, these are the, the criteria, and these are the instructions, okay? But I'm going to provide you a little bit of a more technical um, process, okay? For those of you who don't know what a Schedule C is, right? It looks like this. It's an addendum to your 1040, okay? 1040 is two pages, Schedule C is two pages, right? It's pretty much a profit and loss statement. All right, so with that being said, here, um, my name is Renee Denman. If I am a sole proprietorship and I didn't want to be an LLC, right? I'll just put my name here. And then within here, what you will see is maybe I have a DBA, right? My DBA will be ABC Company. All right, so because it's that, then here I may not have an EIN number only because of the fact that um, I just wanted to go under my social security number, which I have here. So with that being said, if that's not the case with you, it's very important why I'm stressing this. I'm stressing this so much because there are a lot of people at application get holed up because of the fact of the foundation of their Schedule C and understanding it to put that information into the application. So with that being said, here, this is what they're going off of, your line seven on your Schedule C. If I made $50,000 as a notary, right? This would be located here, okay? So these are the most important things 
these are the most important things uh, in regards to uh, your Schedule C and learning it. Schedule C is just pretty much how much money I came in and also all of my expenses. It's not relevant to the application. What you want to zoom in is your line seven. So based off of just a calculation, how much am I eligible for? Here's a calculation. So I have $50,000 on my screen, right? If I divide that by 12, and I times that by 2.5, that's the magic number, okay? I will be eligible for $10,416.66. Wow, that's a lot of money to be wrapped into a stimulus check, right? Approximately. All right, perfect. So that's what to get excited about. How can I in expand my business, okay? All right, so let's go over here. This is what the forgiveness one page application. You're like, hold on, they're gonna give me $10,000 and oh, it can be forgiven? Yes, if you do the right thing. And that's why we're showing you the basis of it, right? 60% to myself. So let's go back to the fancy calculator, right? So if we go back to the calculator here, I'm paying my, I'm getting about $10,000 back, okay? How much do I have to pay myself? Well, minimum, I have to pay myself 60%, okay? That comes up to $6,000. So what do I do with the rest? Well, you can pay yourself the next following month if you really wanted to, $4,000. You have six months of use of money. If not that, then I can use the rest, which is the $4,000, to my business expense. Oh, one day I was really looking forward to buying another printer, right? Or my computer kind of went out. So I need enough money for the printer. All right, so enough chat about that. Let's just say that you're a notary and you really don't have a robust uh, system, right? You're just like, I'm just all over the place with my tax. Uh, I just didn't really have it prepared. Well, we have partnership with Notary Assist, right? Um, which is a platform for notaries where you can pull your PL report. You can pull your quarter three report for the second application, the second draw. So if you, like she, Leslie said, if you have a 25% in reduction, so let's just say that, let's just work with some numbers real quick. We got $50,000 in year one. Okay, in year two, how do I know if I have 25% reduction? Well, if you press... If I just use, okay, in 2019 was my highest year. I times that by 0.25. If my Schedule C doesn't show $12,500 less, then I know I didn't have a 25 production just as a, a overview, right? But it's by quarter to quarter. So that may not be technically the case, but that's just a round figure just kind of see, okay? But what what the program really saying is, do you have a 25% loss in quarter one compared to quarter one? But if you just like, hey, that's a lot of number crunching and stuff, let me just see overall, do I really qualify and just do a, a holistic approach? 25% is my income less than that. Yeah, my income is less than that. It sounds like you're qualified, you know, just a thorough check. All right, so let's go into the application. All right, so how do I apply, okay? Well, you press this apply button, and then you click here. It's gonna take you to our third party website that we partner with, the lender A10 Capital. All right, perfect. This is very important. Who is the loan originator? California Notary Agency. All right, let's go down and apply for our second application. Well, let's log on off of this. Okay. All right. So this would be, let's go back. All right. All right. So this is where we ended up. You have to create a, username and login, right? So pretty much it's saying, what application are you really interested in? Well, I'm interested in the second application, right? I qualify for 25% less. So therefore I'm gonna get double the money. All right, perfect. So I'm gonna type in, okay, my name is Renee. Well, let's just do some more. I'm going to say I am 
Tamika Sam. All right, perfect. My email address is uh, running out of email addresses. Okay, my telephone number is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. My password. All right, password is a little bit tricky, so let's figure it out. All right, perfect. I think I'm good to go. So the first time you create this, it's going to give you an email to your email address saying, hey, we just logged you in. All right, perfect. Now with the application, I'm applying once again for the second draw. This session is about the second draw. All right, what is my legal entity? All right, so I'm going to say my legal entity is ABC Company. But remember, let's pause. This is very crucial, okay, to the application. I got to go back to my Schedule C. As much as I know these answers, you have to see what your tax preparer, your accountant, your CPA, or someone who you trust with your taxes put or yourself put on your Schedule C, all right? So if your Schedule C has ABC Company here, you put ABC company. If it doesn't have ABC company here, then you put your government name, okay? Point blank. All right, perfect. Let's go back. All right, so what am I? Well, I'm a sole proprietorship. So then here I am going to put, okay, I'm going to put it in. What if I don't, I have a social security number. I don't have a taxpayer ID. You just use your social security number, but you have to put it in that correct format. A lot of people call us based on, it's not working. Um, it's just kind of giving you that. So I'm gonna do, that should work. All right, excellent. Um, how many number employee? You are your own employee. All right, number one. When was my business created? My dis business was created, let's just say, January the 1st of 2020. 19. What is my Nexus code? All right. Well, if you type in notary, it'll pop up. Excellent. What is my business number? All right. What is my business? All right. All right. Perfect. I think that looks good. Let's see what the computer says. Would it allow me to go to the next page? I forgot the zip code. All right, perfect. So that's pretty much that application. That's the first page. I'm just gonna go show halfway through the application, okay? So it's saying here, what is my title? I just say I'm an owner. All right, do I own 100% of the application? Yes. This right here, what is the official title? I'm just an owner. All right, so security number again. All right, perfect. I think that's gonna work. No, they want it in a social security format. So three, two, four, three, two, four. All right, perfect. They, my telephone number, my street address, Avenue Street, Los Angeles, CA. So if your business address is listed here, go ahead and put your business address. Some of you guys have business address. If it's listed here, put it on the first part. The second part, what I'm filling out now is my resident address, okay? They can be the same. All right, let's walk through it one more. All right, so it's in right here. It says, hello, acknowledge that the receipt of the first draw. Will you use the full amount? All right, even if the full amount is not already exhausted, you have six months to use it. The moment that you get the first draw, you're eligible once the fund hits your account for the second draw, okay? So this one, do I predict? Um, yes, okay. All right. So right here, it says, who's the loan originator? California Notary Agency. All right. Yes. All right. So this right here is saying, 
payroll selected 2019. And what is listed on my Schedule 7, okay? I mean, Schedule C, sorry about line 7, $50,000. All right. Did I exceed over 100000 No. Did any of the employees reside in U.S.? Yes. All right. What was the compensation of that? Um, I had zero. And then dinner? No. Perfect. So now it's saying, wow, I am eligible for another $10,000. So pretty much that is the process of the application. Couple more steps, but I wanna leave it up to Q&A just in case you guys have any questions. Um, but uh, I hope that if you need our assistance, you will contact us. Um, call the 1-800 number and or the 866, which is right here. And it's also in the chat, 866-505-4152. You can email info at notaryppp.com to see if your special case is different. But it's a five minute application and as you can see, it's very simple for the second draw. Okay, I'll give it up to um, Mr. Toledo and you can guide the question if we have some in the chat. Fantastic, thank you so much, Renee, that was the presentation was flawless as usual. So everybody, let's go right into the Q&A. Let's get it cracking because I know you guys have questions. There's no way you already know how to do all this stuff. So while we have the illustrious Renee Dentman and Leslie Dawson, go ahead, don't be shy. Raise your hand if you want to go live and talk to them or uh, maybe type in your questions on here. This replay will go live immediately because we're on a very tight deadline. Are we not, Renee? Yeah, so we we, yeah. we gotta we gotta move on this thing immediately so you guys can get the funding that you need. Uh Janae, so Janae said, can you apply for the loan if you started your business in 2020? Good question, Janae. Okay, I'll be happy to answer that. Um I see that it says in late 2020. So that sounds like it would be after the February 15th, um, 2020 deadline. So if it was after that, um, at this time, you're not eligible to apply. Um, however, I would say keep an eye out just by going to sba.gov to see if those rules do change. They are changing um, as time goes on and the pandemic lasts a little longer than expected. So that may change over time. Awesome, awesome. Again, raise your hand if you want to go live and type, or if you're a little bit shy, type in your questions in the chat and we will answer your questions. We will get to you. Um, let's see here. So some of the common questions that we get also is, um, do I have to have a business bank account? Um, what is the answer to that, Ms. Dawson? Um, sure. So a business bank account is not necessarily required. I will say it depends. If you run your business as a sole proprietor and it's ran under your name and that's how it appears on your Schedule C for your tax return, then you can use your personal account. If on your Schedule C is showing your business name and you have an EIN for your business, then it is highly recommended that you use your business account where it has the business name on it and it matches. Because what does happen if you don't, your bank can potentially return that um, deposit and not accept it. Okay, I have another question. So my second question, am I able to use it towards startup and not for paying employees. I'm independent. No. <laughs> um, the simple answer to that is it is strictly for your current business. Um, so you do want to stick to the guidelines so that you don't run into not having the loan forgiven. Um, so it is currently solely available for businesses that are already in operation. 
Okay. Well, no, that's definitely, definitely great. So we have a question from um, SPP Management. That's my boy, London Dagens. Go ahead, London, you're live. Awesome, awesome. So I just have a question um, regarding uh, round two. So if you apply for round two and let's say they run out of funds, um, how would that work? Uh, because I know initially the deadline was May 31st, but you guys saying they're going to run out of funds earlier. So if you are already in position uh, for round two with your PPP, how would that work? Okay. Yes. Um, if you apply and they run out of funding, unfortunately, it, you would have to wait until they, Congress decides if they're going to put more funding into the program. So that may take several months, as we can see just from the past, how it took them almost six months to replenish this program again. Um, so that's why we are saying with urgency, if you're eligible, get it in now um, so that, that you can lessen the chances of that happening of them running out of funds. So I guess one of the questions that I have for you is, um, it was my next follow-up question. Can you submit an application with another company if the one you went through is basically um, kind of uh, delaying? Well, Ms. Dawson, I think that will be helpful for his question. Like, hey, I've been with this company. I applied through them. I've been waiting for four weeks. Um, what can I do? I'm in a stagnated. I know that you guys have a lender. You're saying that you turn it around seven to 10 days, but am I even eligible to apply to you guys? Like, how do I know that I can withdraw my application if I can? Okay. Um, so here's what I'll say. You are eligible to apply with um, multiple lenders um, if you would like to do that. Now, once you have signed paperwork, um, through that lender, you will need to withdraw your applications with any other lender that you may have applied with um, so that you do not run the chance or risk of the SBA flagging your application because they once they have your application submitted to them, they assign what's called a P and L number to it. And you can only have one of those. So at the time that you sign documents with any lender, you'll want to withdraw any other applications that you have. And I think that um, helped answer your question a little bit more technical with the SPP uh, management services. Uh, more so that, hey, it sounds like you apply. If you have been assigned a SBA PL number, right, then you just have to stay with that particular lender. Right. But if that's something like, you know what, I've been waiting for about four weeks and I haven't really got a response. No one's answering me. Maybe that's something that you need to, you know, pick up the phone, call us and we'll kind of discuss it with you and kind of see what the best opportunity is for you. Okay. Cool. Right. So we have another question from Erica. She said, so I believe I heard that once funded, the business owner will have six months to utilize the money. Okay, um, that is about correct. Once you receive the funds, you have up to 24 weeks to use those funds. So that's very close to six months. It's just a little bit less. And um, by use the funds, it does not mean actually that you have to spend it all. So for us sole proprietors or just single member LLCs, typically as soon as it hits your account, it's considered that you've used it because they're just assuming that you paid yourself. And paying yourself is a form of using the funds. So um, you don't have to spend it. Awesome. So we have another question from iPhone. iPhone says, can I collect unemployment and get PPP? Wow. Yes. That's you the mystery absolutely question. absolutely can. Um, we get that question a lot um, from people who've been on unemployment throughout the year. Um, but yes. As long as your business is still open and you haven't shut it down, you can still qualify for this loan and still get your unemployment. I love it. I love it. Um, okay. So again, we're on the Q&A section right now. If you guys have any questions, you have two options. You can either raise your hand so you can go live with Renee and Leslie or type in your questions in the chat section. This is the Q&A portion right now. 
So go ahead and type it in or raise your hand to go live. One of what are the frequently asked questions, Renee, that people have about this uh, PPP loan? Yeah, so I just put some in the chat. Um, some of the questions that we get is two different questions because this program is something separate than the program that we're introducing, but we just want to discuss it just a little bit. Um, the EIDL, okay, is the question that we get all the time. There's an EIDL loan and there's an EID grant. And we get a lot of questions. What if I receive the EIDL am I, grant? Am I still eligible? And what if I receive the EIDL loan? Am I still eligible? Ms. Dawson, how would you answer that? Whether you receive the grant or the loan, you're eligible. Now, whenever you fill out the application to apply, it will ask you, and if you put yes, that you received the loan, then it's going to ask you, do you want to refinance that into the PPP? And you have that option to do so, um, but it does not stop you from being eligible for the PPP at all. You can receive both the EIDL grant, the EIDL loan, and the PPP. Um, really, it's almost like the wild, wild west for businesses. Um, <laughs> Right now, when it comes to stimulus, as long as you are providing accurate information, then by all means, apply for each program that you're eligible for. Hmm. Wow, that's awesome. Um, a common question is, um, I am in the process of uh, buying a, a car or buying a house. Um, how would this PPP loan affect my credit? So that is a key difference, actually, since we were just talking about the EIDL. And uh, so the difference between the EIDL and the PPP is the EIDL, when it first came out, it was based on your credit. Um, and a lot of people were getting the nod for it, which is why they were only receiving the grant. With the PPP, there is no credit pool. Um, it's solely based off of your income for your business and when you had it operating. Um, so it will not have any impact on your credit at all. And I do see a question in the chat as well. Um, they're asking, what if I didn't file taxes this year or last year? Um, you will have to file at least 2019 at a minimum um, in order to be eligible for the program at this time. So can I be eligible if I just file my 2020 taxes? You can be eligible. If you just file your 2020 taxes, you are eligible um, for the loan as long as you have the items that are required to prove you were in business prior to February 15th of 2020. That can be your February 2020 bank statement, a 1099 that was received to your business, um, or um, I would say your 2019 taxes, but if you didn't file those, then you at least need to have the other two items to prove that you were operating. Hmm. I noticed like you said, um, I need a, a voided check. Um, I don't have voided check and neither do, um, I want to go to the bank. How, um, can I meet my deadline of applying today? Mm -hmm. Um, if you don't have a voided check, um, that's really not as big of a deal. Most banks have a dot, what they call a direct deposit form that you can get. Um, for example, with I Bank with Bank of America, they have that available in your online portal. You can get a direct deposit form, fill it out with your account and routing number, um, and you can upload that. Also, um, you can, in worst case scenario, you can put it on a Word document as well. Um, and you can go to Walmart, believe it or not. And they can print a check out for you with your account information on it. And then you can write void on that as well. So you do have a couple of different options there. So you mentioned Walmart. I can get checks from Walmart. Yes, you can. Yeah. And I'm going to show you. Oh, didn't do that earlier. Okay. Um, 
I like to go to Google for stuff, but it's only $7. So I feel like this is the most affordable thing that I highly recommend. Why? Because you need checks um, as a accountant. I wouldn't wire the transfers. I wouldn't wire the funds paying yourself um, or paying someone else. If you don't have to, it's always good to have a paper trail. So you just put on the memo of your check, owner's withdraw, um, or just avoided check. Um, avoided check is best option of getting your money than others. So that's why I really want to spend some time with just showing you if your bank doesn't have check, you can get it checks any from Walmart. Okay, we have another question. Go ahead, uh, London. Right, so I do have a question. It's kind of um, a, a tricky. It, it, I wouldn't say it's kind of complicated. So I got approved for the PPP loan um, through my business, through SVP management. Now, that was through um, a platform um, that I initially signed up with. Uh, they was taken all day, but eventually they approved me. But I already signed up through another platform. Now, this platform also gave me my, uh, my PLP um, number, and they also uh, requested me to sign the promissory note. But I already got funded through this business. If I sign that promissory note through this other platform, would that be considered round two or would that be round one? Because SBA, they gave me two separate PLP numbers. Does that kind of make sense? I don't know if I'm explaining it right. It does make sense, and you would not want to sign that um, second one at, by any means. Okay. Um, you you would want to withdraw that application and then put in a, a different, a separate application for the PPP two. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. So they won't consider that as a PPP two. That it would just be the same as that first it's one. The that same I as the first one, and what they'll do if you sign it, they're gonna take it back. They're gonna deny it. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank you. Okay. You're welcome. So what are some of the additional documents that are needed for the PPP2? Like, is there another document that I have to provide extra? Yeah, we mentioned that. Um, that's gonna be, the, and it's optional. Um, so for your business, if you have a profit and loss statement, that can be one of the easiest things to provide if you have it. Um, but if you don't, then you can use your bank statements. Okay. I think I ran out of questions. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you guys for tuning in. You guys had some phenomenal questions. Um, this is part two of a four part special edition series that we're doing specifically for PPP. Uh, Renee and Leslie are blessing the, the notary war room platform with their presence to answer and help you guys get the funding that you need to grow your business the way you need to grow it. So I wanna thank Leslie and Renee for being on here. And we really look forward to um, next Thursday, next Thursday, actually, at 7 p.m. Central Time, 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. What are we going to be talking about on this one? How to get your paperwork right. Ah, got to have your paperwork right. And I believe that lit that falls into the forgiveness part, right? Mm -hmm. So when it comes to forgiveness, it's depending on your lender, um, they may require um, documents like your PL for your uh, second draw. And so we're gonna talk about things to how to get your paperwork right and what really drawn into the forgiveness part and what that looks like. Wonderful, wonderful. So thank you everybody for tuning in. Be on the lookout for the Encore presentation. It will be streaming on all platforms. So be on the lookout for that. We wish you peace, love, and cash flow. You heard? <laughs>